Good morning and happy Sabbath boys and girls. It's such a delight to be here again this week and I am so glad that you came back to worship with us and to have fun praising the Lord. Now again, like I always say every week, I hope that you invited more friends, more families. Don't forget grandma and grandpa, mommy and daddy, big brother, big sister, cousins, everyone. So I hope that you invited them to come and just listen to our program. Because I tell you, each week that I get the videos, I am super blessed. I mean, blessed beyond measures. And I have fun just listening to all the songs. And this week we have so much lined up for you. And I know that you're going to enjoy it. And guys, listen, again, I know that you're sharing this program with everyone. I know that you are. Because we have visitors from different parts of um, the world outside of Jamaica then. Let me say it that way. And this week we're going to have people coming from Canada, from the United States of America, and from just various places. So I am excited and I'm ready to get started with our program. And this morning we're going to have our welcome and that will be done by Nazini Gardner. Nazini attends the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Nazini, go ahead and welcome all of our guests, and don't forget our members and those who return each week. Thank you, and have a good, good Sabbath. Enjoy the rest of the program. Happy Sabbath everyone. My name is Nazini Gardner and I'm here to welcome, welcome, welcome you to a blessed Sabbath day. I'm glad you're here at our Sabbath school. i like you to stay. Have a blessed Sabbath day. Thank you Nazini. Thank you for welcoming us to, the, to our program. Now we're going to have our opening prayer and that will be done by Rashid Skirvin. Rashid is coming to us from the Greater Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now we're going to get ready for prayer. Boys and girls, don't forget to close your eyes, clasp your hands. If you are able to kneel down, I think we should do that too. Here we go. My name is Rashid Skirvin and I will be doing the opening prayer. Let us pray. Thank you for saving lives. Thank you for your many blessings towards us. Thank you for the Sabbath day of rest. Thank you for all our children and viewers. Forgive us and our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Rashid. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And this is the time of the program that I know you all have been waiting for. I have been waiting for to share with you. And it's now time for the sing-along. And again, don't forget to go and get your instruments. If you want to get your instruments, if you have a little piano, accordion. Hey, some people play the spoons and Yes, this might sound funny. I have some I know someone who actually plays a comb. Yes, you know the comb that you use for your hair? Yes, she plays a comb. Now we're going to have our first song and that'll be done by a visitor. And this visitor is coming all the way from Alberta, Canada. And his name is Joshua Jackson. Joshua attends the Cornerstone. Seventh-day Adventist Church and the song that he'll be singing for us is This Little Light of Mine. Go ahead Joshua. This is what I'm I'm gonna let it shine. This is what I'm I'm gonna let it shine. This is what I'm I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Don't let Satan build up. I'm gonna wear a shine. Don't wear Satan Buddha. I'm gonna wear a shine. Don't wear Satan Buddha. I'm gonna wear a shine. Wear a shine. Wear a shine. Wear a shine. 
Wear it shine till Jesus come. I'm gonna wear it shine. Wear it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna wear it shine. Wear it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna wear it shine. Wear it shine. Wear it shine. Wear it shine. That was wonderful, Joshua. Now, how many of you think that everyone you meet knows your name? I don't think so. You usually have to introduce yourself to them. Or if you go somewhere and you have to do something like some of you do, you always say your name first. But this next song that will be sung is He Knows My Name, meaning God knows our name. He knew us before we were born. He even knows how many hairs we have on our head. Have you sat down and count the number of hairs that are on your head? I haven't. And let me tell you, it's a lot. But we don't have to worry about that because we know that God made us. And He knows my name. He knows your name. He knows everybody's name. And so Zahari Royal, she will be singing a song for us, letting us know that Jesus and that God knows her name. Zahari attends the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now let's listen to Zahari sing her song. I have a maker. He for my heart. Before even time began, my life was in his hand. He knows my Now, boys and girls, I'm excited because we have another visitor who will be singing for us. Now, this visitor comes all the way, yes, listen, comes all the way from Maryland, USA. Yes, Maryland, USA. And her name is Janae Wright. Yes, Janae attends the Community Praise Church in Virginia, USA. And her song that she'll be singing is, I am who God says I am. So it doesn't matter what anyone wants to say about you and if, it's, if it doesn't make you feel good, God knows who you are. And whatever God says you are, then that's who you are, right? So now we're going to listen as Janae sings her song. Janae, we're so happy to have you with us. Go ahead and sing your song. My name is Janae Rochelle Wright, and I'm from Maryland in the United States of America.
can be. What God says I'll be. Boys and girls, yes, that part of our program is complete. And I would like to thank Joshua, Zahari, and Janae for singing their songs. And it did my heart well. I hope that you enjoyed the songs as well. I thought I wouldn't have enough songs to share with you this week, but guess what? We have songs. Now, boys and girls, what does it mean to praise the Lord, to praise Him? Well... We have a Grace Link video that will be narrated to you by Auntie Frenita Buddy Fullwood. She is going to tell you um, about the primary lesson. Now, remember to go and get your pencil, your paper, and your Bible so that you can write down everything that you need to understand or something that kind of jumps out at you from the lesson. And then you can review it later um, this Sabbath afternoon or even during the week with your mom and dad, whoever you live with, they can help you to understand what you learned from your lesson. All right, thank you. And now we sit back and listen to Auntie Frenita. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Frenita. Today's story is called Balaam and the Talking Donkey. The memory verse is from John chapter 14, verse 23. It says, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Today's message is we worship God when we follow his instructions. Have you ever seen a dog do tricks? Some dogs can roll over and sit up. 
In our story, a man heard a donkey talk. Really talk. Let's find out what it said. The Israelites were nearing the promised land, but the surrounding nations had tried to stand in their way, forcing the Israelites to go to war with them. But God was on their side, and each victory sent a message. Balak, the king of Moab, knew he didn't have any hope against that kind of strength. But then he remembered what he had heard about Balaam. Some said that whatever Balaam blessed was truly blessed, and whatever he cursed was cursed. If Balak could get Balaam to curse the Israelites, his army might have a chance. So he sent some messengers to bring Balaam to him. They took along a lot of gold. That was the money of their day. Balaam believed in God. He had once been a prophet, but he had become greedy and no longer served God. Yet when the messengers came, Balaam asked God for instructions. The answer came back, do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people because I have blessed them. So Balaam sent the messengers home, but Balak sent more messengers with even more gold. Balaam knew that God did not want him to go. So he said, King Balak could give me his palace full of silver and gold, but I cannot disobey the Lord. God knew that Balaam really wanted to go. So that night, God said to Balaam, These men have come to ask you to go with them. Go, but only do what I tell you. So Balaam saddled his donkey and went with the messengers. Balaam did not see the angel standing in the road to block his way, but his donkey did. So she turned off into a field. Balaam beat the donkey to get her back onto the road. The angel appeared a second time, and the donkey moved against a wall, smashing Balaam's foot. Balaam beat her a second time. The third time the angel appeared, there was no place for the donkey to go, so she lay down in the road. It was after this third beating that the Lord made the donkey speak. What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? She asked Balaam. Balaam was so angry that he answered without thinking. You've made a fool out of me, he said. You have ridden me for years, the donkey responded. Have I ever done this before? And that's when Balaam saw the angel. If your donkey hadn't turned away from me, I would have killed you by now, the angel said. Balaam's life had been saved by his donkey. I have sinned responded Balaam to the angel. If I am wrong, I will go back. The angel said, Go, but you will only be able to say what the Lord wants you to say. When Balaam finally met Balak, he warned Balak, I can only say what the Lord wants me to say. In three different places that day, Balak asked Balaam to curse the Israelites. But every time Balaam opened his mouth, blessings for the Israelites came out. After the third time, Balak was angry. Go home, he ordered. I called you to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them three times. Didn't I tell you I couldn't do anything against the command of the Lord? Balaam answered. Before I leave, I will tell you what these people will do to your people. Then Balaam prophesied truly, A ruler will rise from Israel. He will defeat the Moabites. The Israelites will destroy the city. God taught Balaam that worship involves everything you do. It is living a life that is pleasing to God. Worshiping is listening to God's voice and following His commands. It is using our voices, our speech, and our actions to honor God. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for Gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. Audio is post-produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. 
The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. Thank you, Auntie Frenita, for that lesson review. Now, boys and girls, you're not too young to have a testimony, are you? No, you're not. You can be as little as three, as little as five. You, too, can have a testimony. You know why? Because God cares about you. He loves you. He thinks about you all the time. And He cares about your health. He cares about what you need. And so at this time, we are going to listen to a testimony from Aiden Brown. He attends the Willardine Preparatory School. Now, Aiden has a very interesting testimony, and I just, I love it. So I want you to sit back and listen. And don't forget, if you have a testimony, you share it with someone just as Aiden has. Good day, everyone. My name is Aiden Brown. I would like to give a testimony of God's goodness to those who serve Him. I currently have a talent that I was not born with. My talent is I suffer a hearing loss in both ears. As a result, I have great hearing aids. Some members of staff as well as children are aware of this. The hearing aid I previously had was going bad. Mrs. Servina William, my class teacher, who was sleeping at Fort Moore's Seventh-day Adventist Church, realized my situation at the time. She was kind enough to inform my grandparents and I about the charity program. We went and were able to get a pair free of cost. This acted me greatly, and I am very, very grateful to her. Unfortunately, after a few months, it went bad. Out of God stepped in again. I was able to get another pair from Caribbean Hearing Center for a cost much lighter than the real cost. I would like to thank Mrs. William for being God agent at the time for my great need. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless her and her family. You see, God is faithful to everyone who give their life to Him and serve Him. God is faithful. To Him be the glory and have a blessed day. What a wonderful testimony Aiden had for us today. Let me tell you, God loves us and He will provide all of our needs. And He uses anyone. He can use a big person who's an adult or can use a child. So please, don't forget to share how good God has been to you. Thanks again, Aiden, for sharing that with us. The topic of my sermon is God comforts the repentant sinner. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, as I present your written words to your people, I pray that you will forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Matthew 5 verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5 verse 4 is a wonderful text that describes a process that every child of God will experience. It speaks of being in a state that is mournful. I am sure that right away the concept of death comes to mind. However, the text is much more than mourning over the loss of a loved one. It is actually speaking about being sorrowful for one's own sins and being comforted by Jesus. Let us briefly unpack this text. Our Lord Jesus is saying here that blessed are they that mourn. Another word for blessed is happy, and mourn here is referring to a sorrow for sin. In other words, the Lord is saying to us, happy are they that have a sorrow for sin. Let us look at the life of David. After he sinned with Bathsheba in Psalms 51 verses 2 to 3, he said, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. It is important to understand that as a result of sin, there are consequences such as pain, sickness, suffering, and grief. Truly, 
This is a process that every child of God must experience. When we have a sorrow for sin, it reveals who we truly are, children of God. Romans 3 verse 23 says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How many did I say? All have sinned. Therefore, we must confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. Matthew 5 verse 4 is also made mention of comfort. When we have a sorrow for sin, the Lord will comfort you. Even though Jesus didn't sin, he experienced sorrow when he was separated from God, as he carried the weight of your sins, my sins, and the sins of the world upon his shoulders. And as such, Jesus mourned in brokenness of heart. Such mourning shall be comforted. God reveals to us our guilt, that we may flee to Christ and through him be set free from the bondage of sin. Here, the Lord Jesus is saying, I pay the price for your sins, and if we put our faith and trust in him, we will be comforted, as our sins will have no more dominion over us. Was David sorrowful for his sins? Was he comforted by God? Of course he was. Were the Ninevites in Jonah 2 verses 8 and 10 sorrowful for their sins? Were they comforted? They certainly were. The world is in a state of mourning like no one has ever seen before due to COVID-19. Millions have been infected and thousands have died and are dying. God's heart is open to our grief, our sorrows and trials. He is waiting patiently with open arms for us to come back to him so that he can shelter us from this dangerous storm because this is what he specializes in. My appeal to all of us today and to the world is that it doesn't matter what sickness we have been diagnosed with today, whether it be COVID-19, adultery, fornication, stealing, or lying lips. I implore you to turn from your sins and put your faith and trust in the Lord. He will comfort us. Jesus is calling us back to him to have a sorrow for sin and to repent. Let us approach the throne of grace boldly and ask Jesus to forgive our sins. Jesus offers redemption from sin, and if we turn from our sins and place our trust in him, he will save us and bring joy and peace and comfort that can only come from him. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, I pray that your words will find root in our hearts. Forgive us of our sins and save us now and for eternity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church, and have a wonderful day. Now we will have our final song of the day. And that song will be coming to us from yet another visitor. And her name is Danielle Lexine Ray. Daniela, please go ahead and share your song with us. Everything I am, everything I am, everything I'll be. Everything I'll be, I give it to you, Lord. I give it to you, Lord, and do it thankfully, thankfully. Every song I sing, every praise I bring, everything I do is a gift to you. Everything I am, everything I given me, all you've given me. I give it to you, Lord. I give it to you, Lord, and do it thankfully, thankfully. Every song I sing, every praise I bring, everything I do is a gift to you. We have come to the end of our program, and I am not going to say goodbye, but I will say see you later. 
you all know I don't really enjoy this part of the program, but unfortunately, maybe I do have to say goodbye. And so, at this time, we're going to have our closing prayer by Life Bailey. Life Bailey attends the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Once Life is done with the prayer, we will go right into the goodbyes. And the goodbye will be done by Zade Farron. She also attends the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. My name is Life Bailey. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you, Lord, for this program. Thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath day. Thank you, Lord, for children. Amen. Hi, my name is Ellen Ferran. We have come to the end of our Sabbath school program, and I hope you will enjoy it. Boys and girls, today has, I mean, it's just been a wonderful day, a wonderful Sabbath, and I enjoyed the program. I enjoyed all the singing. Wasn't the music wonderful this week? And I hope you ha had a wonderful time. Um, I look forward to seeing you next Sabbath. Again, remember to share this program with everyone that you know. And as always, I'm asking you, Hit the subscribe button, that way you will know when we post our next program and you will get that notification so that you won't miss this program. It's a wonderful program and we wouldn't want you to miss it. Don't forget to give us our thumbs up. I would also like to tell everyone who came to worship with us today, thank you. If it was not for you, we wouldn't have a need to be here. And so we're just so happy that we're able to provide this program for our little ones and for our bigger little ones, you know what I mean. Now, it's time for me to say my thank you also to those who participated in this program. Listen, if it were not for them, we wouldn't have a program, period. You all wouldn't want to have to hear me talk the whole time. So it's a blessing that we have so many people who want to be a part of this program so that they can share their talents to, and witness to those who need to know Jesus. We look forward again to seeing you next Sabbath, and please do come back, all right? Have a wonderful Sabbath. Auntie Simone loves you.